Hi, everyone. Welcome from live from the mayor's office here in Miami. And I have to say, this is one of the best places that I've been. It's nice and warm outside, and we can actually see the ocean view. I think you have actually the best spot, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, the, the view is great. The salary is not good. <laughs> <laughs> we have a billion view. dollar view. Yeah, that, that's a billion dollar view. <laughs> and we also have a, a board member from Miami Dade, uh, Miami Dade College, Jose Fuentes. Thank you so much. And joining us remotely, we also have Beatriz Barragan, who is the for former president of the winning sorority last year of Lama Lambda Theta Alpha. And someone who does not need an introduction to the Voto Latino family is Wilbur Valderrama, who has been an impeccable force working with us since our founding back in 2004, and who has traveled the country not only speaking about the importance of the Latino vote, but actually knocking on those doors and galvanizing people. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Maria. <laughs> That's so normal, we're not right used to that. And I want to thank our audience for joining us. I think that these Google Hangouts, the reason we have been doing them is that we realize that our audience, we're roughly about 150,000 on Google Hangout, is that it's an opportunity for us to talk and bring the local Latino personalities into their homes and into their, and hopefully into their workplaces. We won't tell your bosses. Mm. Let's find out what is important to the Latino community. And so for the next couple of minutes, what I'd like to share with you is get your ideas of what is moving the Latino millennials. How can we get them involved? We know that they play such an integral role in their families. So how do we move them forward to make sure that they're getting involved politically? And I'd love to start with you, Mr. Mayor, because the work that you've done and the entrepreneurship talent that you've been able to pull into Miami, I think is important. Can you talk a little bit about some of the initiatives and why people should, young people should settle here in Miami besides the great weather? Well, I, I, I mean, the, the weather, it's, uh, it's great here in Miami, but also Miami is unique. Mm -hmm. Miami is the most diverse city in the U.S. Uh, you know, the Archbishop, when uh, he was called from the Vatican to say, you've been appointed the Archbishop of Miami, he said, oh, I'm so glad, because I will be the Archbishop of the closest Latin American city to the U.S. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and that is, and Miami is unique because, you know, we have so many cultures, so many languages, uh, so many people. 60% of the people in Miami were born outside of the United States. And I will dare to say that the other 80% uh, were born of fathers and mothers of immigrants, like uh, my, wife, uh, my, my children, like, you know, people here. But I think that the, the, what, what brings them here, uh, we, they want to stay here. Is the fact that they can accomplish the American dream here. It's uh, we have seen uh, young entrepreneurs. Uh, we have several uh, incubators in in the city of Miami. So, so what, what kind of incubators do you have? Well, it's small businesses, uh, mostly high tech. Uh, okay. You know, and uh, from people broadcasting from a small closet uh, in Wynwood, uh, in one of those. Uh, incubators uh, to people, uh, young people who decided that they will sell uh, all long planes of all music uh, throughout the world. So ideas are coming up here in Miami. I think that the, that the young Latin, uh, Cuban American, Colombian Americans, uh, Venezuelan Americans, uh, uh, they're 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 becoming a force to be reckoned with uh, in terms of entrepreneurs. And, and they have the ambience here. You know? They have, everybody is friends. You know, we are a, a city where we don't have any issues between nationalities or race. And that's important. So you're unifying everyone under one flag, like Wilmer likes to say. Well, I mean, it, it's not it's not us. Uh, it's, this is not government driven. I think it's uh, the culture, uh, the upbringing of, of the families, uh, you know, good people. Uh, the fact that they saw their parents uh, work very hard so they can do whatever they mm -hmm. wanted to be. Uh, I think that we stand on the shoulders of many people that worked really hard uh, to, to build what Miami is today. And uh, So I think that that's the main thing. And besides, uh, Miami, uh, it's a brand name. Mm -hmm. We have the brand name. Everybody wants to be in Miami, even if the heat. <laughs> we will bring that up right now. Because <laughs> our next or, or is sure we. Or sure we. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Wilmer, something that the mayor brought up was the entrepreneurship abilities in Miami and how they're incubating great ideas. 
Can you talk a little bit about the Vocal Latino Innovators Challenge and how Miami can get involved in that? Absolutely, absolutely. I think um, when, you know, one of the, for the for the first time in a very long time, we we understand you know the, the influence that young people have in not just the elections but in in the national community, and um, and nobody knows how to communicate with one another than the millennials. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. Um, you know, nobody knows better than uh, and how to actually create some kind of a actual national conversation or even sometimes an international conversation uh, than, than these young people. And the idea is to empower them to, to, to find the technology, to create and develop that technology and, and hopefully help boost that 7% um, of Latinos that are, um, are in the tech jobs. I feel like there's right. such a low percentage of Latinos that that are taking some of these high-paying jobs, you know, and I think that this is important to, to kind of incentivize them to, to to be excited about that aspect of the industry. But aside from that, you know, both our team, we're we're going to uh, we're going to grant about five hundred thousand dollars and try to identify between ten and fifteen, you know, uh, young, you know, uh, people that, that have uh, that have some kind of idea, some some kind of technological platform where they can not only communicate with. with, with one another, but at the same time, make some kind of a difference in their community. I think that, that that to me is 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 groundbreaking because I really feel like for the first time in a very long time, we'll be able to just empower them and give them the tools and and, and the funding, you know, that, that they need to actually create a platform that, that hopefully creates the change that we need. And the Rolodex, right? So basically, through this challenge, we're going to take we're going to collect people and they're going to go to Google headquarters and spend a day at Google and find mentors that can help them bring their idea to fruition. So we want Miami to participate. How great would it be if someone that won, you know, seven seventy-five thousand dollars came from Miami and we actually made that that idea come to life? Right. right. And so, so one of the reading your bio, you have an impeccable bio, but what what something that drew me to you was this idea of the community service and the awards and the recognitions that you received as a result of it. As someone that has been has, has such a distinguished career, why is it important to give back? Oh, it's I think it's critical. Um, in fact, I was having this conversation. I was driving here. Uh, I think that this community is an incredible community. It, it does give back to you anyway. Um, my daughter was recently living in Los Angeles, and she had started working for a man talent management company over there, and a year later found herself just saying, look, I want to come back home. And I didn't understand why, and she explained, she said, Miami's more loving, and uh, it's a, a cariño. The it's love that we Hispanics <laughs> have is a little bit different, a little bit passionate like that. And I think that based on what I, I grew up in a, a, a typical Cuban household, well, not so typical, but my mom's Japanese, but my dad's Cuban. <laughs> uh, but my dad always believed that you have to give back, that it wasn't about take, take, take. And in order to make not only yourself better, but to make your future better, and those who follow after you better, you have to give. It's, it's, it's critical. Um, it's, it's interesting that the mayor and I know each other not because of his political career, but when I was seven years old, my dad introduced me to the mayor because my dad was involved in Little Havana Activity Centers for Senior Citizens, and he was one of the biggest advocates. Um, and my dad made me volunteer, and I was like, oh, this is horrible. You know, I, I, I was not in politics, <laughs> but he was a dad. That wasn't his point. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was in radio and TV at that time. And, um, and, and, you know, I used to watch the mayor on a TV show where he would talk about politics and, and all this and, and on a local network. Uh, affiliated here, and I kept hearing all this, and I was like, wow, that's awesome what he does. I would love to do that. And and the way that I was told to do it was volunteer. Give up yourself. Give your time. And I have, it's funny, I have less time to do anything personal free time, but I consider it free time. I consider that when you give to the college, or you give to like city year, or you give to the city in the volunteer capacity, you're making a difference. And it's important. I, I, I would love for more of our, our millennials and our, and our other generations to get involved because it's critical in making the city great. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, and I think that Miami has compassion. Miami is a city of compassion because uh, the children that were born here, uh, they, they saw their family struggle because every family struggled. And they have compassion with other people. And I will tell you, uh, we had a cleanup of the bay and uh, the Marine Stadium, which is uh, going to be renovated. I mean, we have 400 uh, young uh, men and women picking up trash uh, all Saturday and all Sunday. Then you have city gear. Then you have 
uh, the other day we did a, a veterans stand down on Memorial Day. Uh, we served about a hundred and some veterans that needed help, and there were three hundred volunteers. So, so people really care. They, 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 there's still that bridge to close, and he's right in terms of what is need to be done. That the young people must understand that the ultimate uh, volunteerism is to vote. Hmm. That's right. Right. And Beth, please, I actually want to bring you in on the conversation. So Beth, please, she was the she was the president of the sorority who won our local Latino contest last year called Record yeah. Letters. The whole idea was to go on college campuses, use the the outreach mm -hmm. and enthusiasm that the fraternities and sororities have to do just that, Mr. Mayor, get the young people to register to vote. And Beth, please, can you talk a little bit about not only the importance of using your campus affiliates, but also something that. That Jose, that Jose mentioned as well is not how do you actually use your college campuses and why as a young person yourself is it important to get involved and how do you motivate people because you guys you crush the competition. <laughs> well first thank you so much for having me here today I appreciate the opportunity and um, you know Lana Theta Alpha historically uh, our founders from the very beginning were social activists and uh, they were involved in getting not only uh, the Latino vote going, but even as far as getting uh, Latin American studies um, at their campus when they were uh, undergraduates there. So since then, we have instilled in our membership that importance to always be social activists in your community. And that's something that I encourage all organizations to do that um, because it's going to get them out there. It's going to get them to want to be involved. and what Lana Theta Alpha did last year is that we wanted to take it a step further. We wanted to provide the educational resources to directly to our members so they become informed uh, voters and participants overall. And so we uh, did voter registrations to make sure that, that we're registering um, millennials and our parents and our uncles and our aunts. Uh, but also we participated in webinars where we discussed uh, various issues that concern us directly, uh, such as the student um, uh, student loan reforms, immigration, health care. Uh, we did a lot of e-newsletters where we provided resources and links to information where our members can go directly and, and read upon what is affecting them most uh, closely. So once, once we were able to educate our membership, they felt even more encouraged to be out there on their campuses and participate. And so they they did the voter registration drives. They they held uh, informational sessions on their campus because they they understood the passion um, and and that it was going to take them to do something about it. So um, I, I'm very happy that last year when we participated in the uh, Rep Your Letters campaign. Uh, that they really stepped up to the challenge and that they not only informed themselves but their communities as well. So I'm very proud of them and I and I, we want to continue this on. We definitely don't want this to stop just because the president's, uh, presidential elections have already passed. We want to make sure that every single year they're participating in their communities, that they're involved in mid-year elections, that they're involved in local elections. So. Uh, I'm very happy again about what our membership is doing. I encourage other Greek organizations to participate as well, and I know that they are, that they're also doing their own efforts as well. And, you know, together we're going to be able to create some change. The millennials are, you know, I'm actually one short year away from being identified as a millennial, so, but I st I'm still very, I, I still very much identify with them. And, um, this is the group that's going to come up with the most innovative solutions to the problems that we come across in our communities. They are the groups that in their lifespan saw the rise of the internet, cell phones, and other technology advancements. And they are also the group that has faced a lot of challenges, you know, the economy, the job market. And so already from the get-go, they are starting to think outside of the box, like what do I need to do to get ahead? And um, they're using um, all the information that they've acquired in the last couple of decades, you know, with technology and everything, they're using that information and creating systems to persevere. So I'm very happy to see that, like, Voto Latino is doing the innovative, innovative challenge because I think this group is going to really be the one that's going to create a lot of uh, change. They have a lot of power. They have a voting power. Um, and they also have uh, the drive to really change uh, 
overall culture. So um, I, I see it with my own organization. I see it with other Greek organizations. And, and I'm really, really happy to be a part of it. Well, thank you so much. And I, I love the fact that you shared your secret sauce. And the secret <laughs> sauce is to tell a voter why it matters. Right. To go and I can give them the information that they need. I, I just want to say that um, former, uh, what you're doing, it's, uh, it's important. It's great. And to show the people out there, the millennium uh, young people, uh, why uh, it matters to vote is that, number one, on, on the local election, you hear in the media, well, only elderly people go out to vote. And yet, and yet when there is uh, an issue that affects the young people, they come out on emails uh, and, and they come to city commission yeah, meetings, yeah. Uh, etc. But more important is that they have, they might not remember, mm -hmm. but here in Miami, the world changed when in the year 2000, the presidential elections uh, were stopped, and by 700 votes here in the city Maybe of Miami, you, say that. No, it's you know, yeah. the world changed. Yeah. So for better or worse, it doesn't matter. But that what what happened is that 700 people changed the world, and it happened here. So that's the importance of one one vote. And I just want to thank you. No, no, no. Thank you for the words. I mean, honestly, we started this organization about 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, uh, Rosario Dawson and I, you know, um, identified something that was, uh, for some reason, was, number one, it was a very unpopular conversation. I mean, no one was really identifying the community as uh, any kind of threat on any level of the spectrum, whether it was as a consumer, whether it was as a viewer, whether it was as an audience, or, um, uh, or, or just uh, um, as a community. And uh, it was like this uh, kind of almost forbidding conversation. It was like they, it, to be honest, it was almost like pulling teeth to really get the community to understand how influential they really could be. And then, you know, four years into it, all of a sudden there started to be a little bit more momentum and all of that. And then six years after that, you know, as you can see in the last you know, five to six years, you know, you, you really understood what, what we were all about. And I think something that we're we're realizing oftentimes people say, you know, well, what, what's the potential of the Latino vote? Only 50% 50 of us go out and vote. Well, 50% of us go out and vote, and we decide the president. If 60 to 70% of us went out and voted, we decide policy. And I think that's what you're trying to say, is right. that, it's that it's important to, that every vote matters, and for only, if the only people that are participating right now is a generational divide of people that are elderly, then we're not going to actually get the policies that young people need as well. Yeah, or, or the or, or the issues that affect us most. Mm -hmm. right. Here in Dade County, uh, almost two decades ago, um, we had a race, a congressional race. A member had passed away, open seat, and it was through the power of radio, Hispanic radio, where they, at, you know, they were looking at the poll numbers and they noticed that, you know, the numbers of Hispanic turnout wasn't quite there, and they did push mm -hmm. all day until seven o'clock. It was get out, you you know, you're gonna lose the Hispanic seat that's yours. You're gonna lose that Hispanic seat. And sure enough, they turned the tide, and that seat was they elected the first Hispanic, you know, female out of Dade County uh, to Congress, and 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 that's when you realize you have power. And you know, the mayor is correct. You know, the 2000 race shows you how important it is to go out and vote. Um, here in Dade County, I think we sometimes take it for granted, little by little, and it's the next generation that takes it for granted. Uh, the millennials have to, you know, become more empowered. They have to get more involved. Uh, they've got to. Uh, create their CRs, their you know DRs. You know, the, the for folks young, who may not know what CR and young DR. Republicans or young Democrat Democrats. clubs in their universities or colleges, those are critical air places to be involved. We recently had an issue, um, the undocumented issue, which uh, for in-state tuition, mm -hmm. that was very much a, a bill that's been floating around for decades, and there's been many House and state members mm -hmm. that fought for that. This year was a year it passed, but it also had a constituency. And all of a sudden, you know, Hispanics were like, you said, well, they're out there and they actually are going to vote. So they got notice. And the issue under a Republican governor, it got passed. It got signed just recently. And I think that's, you know, credit to involvement, you know, um, not, not stopping regardless. And I, and I think that's what the young people have to learn. And after you finish college, keep doing it. One of, one of the, I, I believe that one of the biggest issues that we've had I think that Miami has been living an example for a long time, and I was born in Miami myself, so 
I, I can understand. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get I get some points with it. Um, no, but the, the 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 thing that we struggle with the most is that as a community, we have been so segregated with one another. I think that Miami has said an example that over here we kind of wave one flag. You know, whether you're Puerto Rican, Colombian, you know, Venezuelan, or Cuban, you know, you kind of you kind of unite as a as a. Yeah, that's what happens when you start marrying Cubans, <laughs> Cubans, Argentinians. It's a family God. thing, then. It's like <laughs> you're, you're no longer just Cuban. You're right. Cuban Costa Rican or Cuban Nicaraguan or Cuban yeah. Colombian. But not until you start realizing that that there was more of us out there that we, we the, the, number one we're really talking to one another, and uh, then all of a sudden across the nation we started seeing there was a, a more of a, a, a level of unity. And I think that only happened in the last couple of years when all of a sudden they realized, whoa, wait a minute, there is a lot of Latinos out there, and we're not talking to one another. And I think that this is the this is the moment, this is that moment in time where we need to actually be united in one flag, to be honest, and wave the same flag together because I think that our heritage is going to be implied by what we do as a community together. And I think that that, that to me is 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 the is, is what she was talking about. The secret sauce here is to basically it continue to talk to one another, no matter whether you're Mexican or Cuban or Puerto Rican or Colombian or Venezuelan uh, or Salvadorian. I mean, I think that this is, this is that time where we're here in America together. We can really decide what is going to be our community like tomorrow. What is the young people going to look forward to? And as we become the majority of this country, and to add, to add to that, um, you know, the leading up to the 2012 elections, the millennials were the largest eligible voting group in the United States. And unfortunately, they don't all come out, and, and the voting participation is not there. I want to imagine that soon they can all come out and vote because they have great voting power. They can sway election outcomes. You know, and, and the, the thing that I always get, well, um, you know, our vote doesn't matter, our vote doesn't count. Yes, it does. It does count. Because in order to have a collective, you need to be able to get every individual vote to have a collective. And if everyone has that same mindset, then you're right. Your vote doesn't matter because you're not participating. And so we want to always be able to encourage um, millennials. We want to be able to educate them and make them understand that you have a lot of power in your hands. You just have to be able to use it. And, and you know, I, I, I will say uh, that the first thing that uh, has to happen is that uh, people, the pollsters mm -hmm. and the media, see that there is really a momentum of the millennium vote. Because every time that you read a poll done by a national or local pollster, they say, well, a voter 65 and older uh, approve or disapprove. And this means that the election is going this way because these are the voting blocks that goes to an election. And then the media uh, just dismiss uh, the young people because they think that, uh, you know, the elderly are the ones that, that decide uh, every local election or state or even a national election. So uh, the only way to change that uh, is, is to show that there is voting power. And I think what, something that you touched upon, too, is that the media also and pollsters have to change how to communicate with people. Right. So oftentimes they're lost when it comes to those those communication channels right. because they call elderly on landlines, but millennials don't, don't have, have landlines. So how, do you, how do you poll them? Right. Right. You know, it's like, well, that's one of the, they do vote. They, they so, poll yeah. differently, but, but they, yeah. just, they just think that they don't vote. Exactly. That's right. why they don't right. poll them. That's right. No, that's absolutely right. So, Mr. Matt, what has been one of your challenges? as mayor when it comes to outreach for young people and how can they get better involved in Miami? No, I, I don't think it's a challenge. I think that young people are involved in the city of Miami. As we speak, in every department of the city of Miami, we have interns that would bring uh, from the workforce, we're paying them to learn how government works. And maybe, maybe out of those uh, 300 that we have, Maybe Penn will decide to run for office. That's wonderful. So how can young people know, find out more about that program? Well, the, all the slots are filled. So right. We're waiting for next year. <laughs> for next year. They I'm can apply to the city of Miami. Okay, that's fantastic. And I know that, so we have one more minute left. So I'd like to basically just ask, very briefly, we have these, if you could share with me, so in a way that you are, you're a young person, you have multiple tasks before you, what sparks your, you know, what sparks your passion? Just very briefly. 
You know, uh, I, I had the opportunity to come to college, get full ride scholarship, um, and graduate from school here, and I, I didn't do that alone. A lot of people helped me get to where I am at, and so I want to be able to give back, and I think that's something that a lot of our members identify with, that, that they had a, a support system, either their family members, their sorority, uh, friends back home, and that support support system was able to get them to where they're at today. So once you you reach that moment of, of success, you kind of look back and say, how can I do the same? How can I give back? And so every single day, I'm thinking of just what what can I do to give back? And um, and that's why I'm involved with my sorority because my, my sorority did so much for me that I'm going to give my volunteer time to it. Um, so I, I think. I think especially with our uh, with with young Latinos, that's the key thing to them is that they got a uh, support, and so look back and, and see how can you also help the next generation move up as well. That's beautifully said. Beautifully said. Sarah, do you have any closing No, I, I agree with you 100. <laughs> percent That's exactly what has to happen. You know, pay forward. You know, that's 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 what's going to make the difference. Mr. Mayor. Well, I I think it's important that. Uh, young people do get involved uh, because uh, eventually um, we we are retired. Uh, we are time limited, uh, so we need people that really care uh, to fill the vacuum uh, in local government because local governments uh, are the trenches. Yes. Uh, you know, this is the first line of responding. You know, things happen at the state level and the, at the national level. But your quality of life, uh, your possibilities of being educated uh, depends on the level. I think that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Whether your garbage begins to pick up or not right. depends right here on your level. For me, for me, I, I have to say just one thing, and it's very just to compliment what, what um, everyone else really emphasized today here is that let's just never forget um, the sacrifices of the thousands and uh, millions and millions of families that have come to this country uh, and and have made. You know the real fight as an immigrant. You know I think that I, I'll never forget. You know I'm an immigrant myself. I'm an immigrant from my family, and I think that if we could just never forget the sacrifice that our parents have made and uh, to bring us here to get the education that they never had, I think that, that should be fuel enough to just at the very least bring uh, pride to uh, to your household and to your parents. And I think that that uh, ironically is going to bring pride to uh, to. I just want to wrap by saying thank you so much to Miami. This is the very first time that the Latino is here, and you've received such a warm welcome, not only with the weather, but with the mayor's office. Thank you so much for participating. Yeah, please thank you. And for folks, if they want to find out more about Moto Latino, they can go to votolatino.org. We are excited because tomorrow is our kickoff for the Voto Latino Power Summit, where a lot of the skills and leadership training that Beat Bees had mentioned, the seventh step that the mayor had mentioned as critically vital as being a leader in your local community. We are going to be teaching tomorrow. We have individuals, everyone from folks from BuzzFeed to the Huffington Post. We have individuals coming in from Network, uh, the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, recognizing that in order to be a full citizen, we need to be able to make sure that we're tapping into your entrepreneurship, your leadership, and your civic action. So thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to register to vote. Go to trendyourvoice.com and register to vote there. Thanks so much, guys. And thank you. Thank <laughs> you.